أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear sister firstly let me begin by saying آمين to your dua mashallah it seems like this man that you want to marry is having a very positive effect on your deen but unfortunately it seems that your parents are rejecting the thought of you marrying him despite the fact that he's having this positive effect on you but it would appear that their reasons for rejecting him are based on racial grounds because you say that they've stated that they would rather see you marry a black man even if he's an atheist than see you marrying an Arab. So your question was what does Islam say about racism? And I can give you plenty of evidence to tell you what Islam says about racism and then this will also help you with the second part of your question regarding convincing your parents that racism is against Allah's will. And this is because the evidence that I'm going to provide here comes directly from the Quran, directly from the Sunnah. So what more perfect sources can you draw upon to convince them that racism really is against Allah's will? So we know that Islam is a faith for everyone. It's a faith for all times. It's a faith for everyone. And people from all across the globe are Muslims from different countries. We all have different skin colors. We are all completely different from one another. But... The teachings of Islam don't give any room for racism at all. We know that there is diversity in life, diversity in everything around us, and that includes the colors of our skins and the differences um, in our opinions and our ways of life as well. And we need to appreciate these differences as well. So the first thing that we can draw on is that in the Quran, in Surah 30, ayat number 22, Allah says, and of his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the diversity of your languages and your colours. Indeed, in that are signs for those of knowledge. And furthermore, in Surah 49, ayat number 13, O mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female, and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. So from that we can take the fact that the most important thing really is not our skin color or our race, but actually how righteous we are. And we can draw on many examples as well that no one skin color, no one race is more superior to the other as well that really the most important thing is that of piety and righteousness. So in, um, in a hadith narrated by Abu Musa, was that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu said, Indeed, Allah Most High created Adam from a handful that he took from all of the earth. So the children of Adam come in according with the earth. Some of them come red and white and black and in between that and the thin, the thick, the filthy, and the clean. So that's saying we all come from the same, we all come from Adam. We all come down from Adam. We all come from the same place. So there's no room for racism according to this because we all come from the same. And it doesn't matter that we have different skin colors because we all come from the same ultimately. And even if we go to the final sermon by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam, where the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam said in the final sermon, O people, your Lord is one and your father Adam is one. There is no virtue of an Arab over a foreigner, nor a foreigner over an Arab, and neither white skin over black skin, nor black skin over white skin, except by righteousness. Have I not delivered the message? Again, so we're giving the same we're given the same message again here. And here we're even directly relating to Arabs and non-Arabs and that no one is more superior than the other. So that almost directly answers your question um, regarding um, the superiority of the black over the white, the Arab over the non-Arab, that everybody is all the same. And even we know that um, Allah does not tolerate this kind of attitude um, as he says in the Quran in Surah 38 in Ayah 76 to 77 um, regarding what happened with um, Shaitan being dispelled from uh, Jannah due to his 
arrogance and pride. So in this ayat, Allah says, Shaitan said, I am better than he. You created me from fire and you created him from clay. Allah said, then get out from here, for verily you are outcast. So this again, we can relate this to um, that of right, racism and seeing one person uh, not being superior to the other. There's nothing that puts one over the other. So there's plenty of evidence anyway that we've seen there, um, given in the Quran and the Sunnah. And they're very clear in their message. There's no ambiguity in it. We can very clearly see that there's no room for racism in Islam. And we know, you know, from what you're saying, you know, they are your parents. So it might be difficult to um, approach them with this um, because, you know, obviously they're your parents. We must obey them. However, if they are advising you to do something against Islam, then you are not obliged to obey them. As it says in the Quran in Surah 29, Ayat number 8, And we have enjoined upon man goodness to parents. But if they endeavor to make you associate with me that of which you have no knowledge, do not obey them. To me is your return, and I will inform you about what you used to do. So we might, you know, we might say that in this case, that is, they quite possibly are, you know, advising you to do something or pushing you to do something that is very much against Islamic principles. And we can use the Quran to support this. So... You can make du'a for them, um, make du'a for them to change their hearts, to soften their hearts, to open their hearts and turn them away from being racist. From being racist, and also, obviously, making du'a for the marriage that you wish to go ahead to actually go ahead. And you might um, approach them, perhaps not by defending the man that you wish to marry, marry personally without actually even bringing him into it personally, but just just defending the nation that he belongs to as well as kind of making clear to them that, you know, there's no room for racism in Islam. So to um, draw upon a hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood 4340, Abu Sa'id al-Qudri said, I heard the messenger of Allah say, if any one of you sees something objectionable, he should change it with his hand, if he can change it with his hand. And the narrator Hamad broke the rest of the tradition, which was, was completed by Ibn al-A'la, but if he cannot do so, he should do it with his tongue, and if he cannot do so with his tongue, he should do it in his heart, that being the weakest form of faith. So basically saying, you know, if you can, if you can physically remind them of this by telling them about it, uh, and doing something about it, you can do so with your tongue, you can talk to them about it, um, and if not, then you can do it in your heart by making dua for them. Um, you know, and these are all different approaches that you can take to um, bring this issue to them, that racism in Islam is not acceptable. So there's plenty of evidence there that you can rely upon to put your message across to them and to reassure yourself that to marry someone of a different race is okay in Islam and there is plenty of evidence to support that. May Allah bring peace and happiness into your household between you and your parents and may Allah grant you a righteous spouse that will be the coolness of your eyes as well as being good for your deen. Ameen.